Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Yosha. Today's video is going to be a recap and my thoughts around season two of Life After Lockup. So I'm gonna start with talking about Angela and Tony. Angela and Tony started the season kind of in a weak place. The last episode of Love After Lockup ended up with Tony going to a motel. And we find out at the opening of the season that Tony was cheating with prostitutes. So Angela was upset, but she ended up loosening up and letting him back into the house to shower and brush his teeth. And then she ended up speaking with him to give him some rules about what he can and cannot do. So she said that she was going to give him one last chance, mandated to phone searches at any time, and she wanted to make sure that he was where he said he was going to be. Basically work and home and that's it. So you could see that Tony was trying to live by the rules, but he wasn't really happy. But he was going along with it because he was paroled there. So he wasn't trying to ruin that situation. He seemed to clean up his act just a little bit enough to kind of woo Angela. He set up this nice um, backyard date for them he grilled steaks and stuff like that and during the dinner he basically said that he loved her and he wanted to get married so from that point i think angela was a little blinded by love more so than usual and they went and started planning the wedding her family and her friends were not going for the whole angela and tony thing her sister doesn't like tony you could tell she didn't like him and she was not sugarcoating it and that's one thing that i could appreciate about her friends and her sister because some of our friends that you'll see in this season kind of entertain some of the foolishness that the inmates were given the non-inmate in these relationships. And they didn't tell their friend when it was just completely ridiculous. But with Angela's people, this was not happening. So Tommy, which was Angela's longtime friend, he loves Angela, he's in love with Angela. He proposed during Love After Lockup. He was not giving Tony a break at all. He would do little things to try to set him up. When they went and did suit shopping, he purposely tried to tell Tony that he proposed to Angela to stir some stuff up. And it did upset Tony to a degree, but not to where his feelings were hurt. I think he just kind of thought of it as a way to argue with Angela and say, how can you put these rules on me, but you didn't tell me about Tommy proposing to you. But it really didn't upset him because I don't really think he cares about Angela based on his behaviors. This season revealed that Tony's behavior may be a result of the things that happened to him in childhood. He did do a confessional where he talked about how his father was physically abusive to him and cheated on his mother and it became a normal thing for him. And Many times throughout his confessionals on the show, you hear him saying that he's cheated on all his other girlfriends in the past because that's just what he was taught and that's what he saw as normal. So in some ways, I felt like hearing that made me kind of understand why he is the way he is. But I do think that it also allowed a ground for weakness for Angela because she thought they were getting closer and they were getting better because he confessed these things. But a manipulative person may use that sort of confessional as a way to excuse bad behavior. So fast forward, the wedding planning is going about, Tony says he wants his best man to be his inmate friend. I think his name was Andre. They have a bachelor party at a strip club. They invite Tommy, which I don't know why Tommy was invited other than to spy for Angela. But I think Andre paid for Tony to have a special police lady lap dance and Tommy takes it upon himself to record the lap dance and send the footage to Angela. Angela comes in busted up and ruins the bachelor party. So that was kind of like the night before the wedding and they get married the next day and then all hell breaks loose on the finale because he's cheating again and she goes through his phone. Why did she choose to wait until after the wedding to search that phone because she said during the confessional that the record showed that proof was in the messages up to two weeks before they got married she should have probably checked that beforehand 
The season ended off saying that they're still married, but they're separated. She put him out. But it's like she could have avoided being in a situation where she's married. I think that Tony pushed him to get married because he wanted to, on paper, be at her house. On paper, said that that is his wife so that he can have a little more freedom as far as his stipulations of his parole. I don't really think it was because he loves Angela. All the red flags were there. Her family didn't sugarcoat it, but she did what she wanted to do. So you make the bed, you have to lie in it. So now let's get into Josh and Cheryl. You really didn't hear about their story at the very beginning of this season. Um, they were not really a focused couple. So as maybe like the second, third episode rolled around, you heard that Cheryl and her son were going to relocate back to where Josh was and try to make it work once again. During the season, you learned that they had actually broken up two or three times prior to this particular season. They were just arguing a lot. And it felt kind of like a lot of their arguments were because of Josh's mom disapproving of Cheryl because of a situation that happened when he was locked up. But this season, it, it kind of felt like their story was kind of short. Um, she moved up there to be with him, but she ended up going back home at the very end of the season because they broke up again. Cheryl, what I'll say about her, I think she's a very kind girl, but she has a hot head and a, and a hot temper. She appears to be a little insecure and controlling. And Josh, I think that he loves Cheryl, but between his mom being in his ear and then Cheryl basically disrespecting his mom, disrespecting him from time to time, and then also trying to adjust to being free, it just was not working out because it was like they could not make it two days without arguing with each other. Josh's mom was definitely a troublemaker. She would definitely start the pot. She started a lot of shit. And she would make little snide comments. But I do think that Cheryl didn't have respect for the mom. And it was clear she would call her out of her name. She called her a female dog several times throughout the season. She cursed her out in her own home. And I'm just like, regardless of how you feel, sis, she got to fake it till you make it. She wasn't good at faking it. The mom, you know, at that age, older women, older men, older people in general, they're not faking it anymore. Like, if I don't like you, I don't like you. You're in my house. She should have just stuck to her plan of, I'm going to smile, I'm going to fake it, and then we're going to find this place and move on with our lives. And I think that they probably could have worked out had that been the case. But with the constant bickering with the mom and Cheryl, it was just a really stressful situation. And I think that Cheryl was kind of in la-la land or in like her expectations of what Josh could do for her in that moment were slightly unrealistic. I think that if she would have been a little more patient and maybe try a long distance relationship instead of trying to run up there and be with him so that he could have some time to get himself together. It could have also possibly worked out. Like, let him work for you. Let him get his stuff together. Let him get his ducks in a row. When the season ended, Cheryl was back home with her dad and her mom. And it had only been a month. Uh, Josh had been promoted at his job, so he was making more money. I think that if they would have been more patient and not so eager to just have sex and be with each other, they probably could have worked it out once he had more money and she could actually kind of adjust and just trust that they'd be okay. That probably would have been a little bit better and would have been beneficial for their relationship. Next, I'm going to talk about Tracy and Clint. Tracy and Clint were a roller coaster. The season started off with Tracy being locked up. And I saw previews before the season started where we saw Tracy in the jail cell with her little black vest on. She didn't have a wig on. She looked like she had been through it. We learned that they got arrested because they were visiting Tracy's family and they pulled over to rest. They had drugs on them. Clint had a marijuana pipe. Tracy had meth. And I guess they both got arrested, but in certain states where marijuana is legal, I'm sure Clint got off very easy in comparison, especially given Tracy's track record. I don't care what anybody says. I think they both use drugs. Clint is just lonely, and I think that he is relying on certain drugs. Maybe not as bad as 
Tracy, but I think that he also uses and that may cause some of the enabling behaviors that he has. He wore down his parents when they found out that she was in jail or prison again. They basically were like, I don't want any parts of it. We've already told you how this is going to go. You keep running back. She doesn't want to get the help that she needs. If you decide to be with her, we're going to have to cut you off. Clint bonds Tracy out regardless because he loves Tracy. Spends $5,000 to get her out. And she basically gives him her butt to kiss. I think she was dealing with drugs and she just was not herself. She told the producer she didn't want to record for the first two weeks after she was released. And every clip that we saw with her, she just looked like she had come down from a high. She disappeared on Clint for two days and I think it was you know because of the drugs and it just seemed to really tear Clint apart but surprisingly towards the end after a very bad argument she'd agreed to go to rehab and the episode said that she left after 24 hours but then after that she decided to come back and complete the program so I felt good because seeing Tracy in that state made me feel really bad for her because I feel like she is not herself when she's in that situation. Drug abuse is something very serious. It alters our our normal. It makes us a person that does not love or care about anyone except ourself and getting that next fix. So that's where that left off. I'm wishing Tracy the best. I'm wishing Clint the best, whether they stay married or not. I mean, when you say those vows, you do try your best to make things work, but there is a breaking point for everyone. So I just hope that they both do the best they can to take care of themselves individually. Next, I'm gonna get into Marcelino and Brittany. Marcelina and Brittany have such a nice relationship. They're definitely one of the couples that I root for on the show. They seem to be more stable. Uh, Marcelino is an awesome provider. He's very welcoming of the family. I know a lot of people didn't like Marcelino in the first season because he came off as very controlling. And in some ways he was, but I think it's just because of the age difference because he is, you know, like 40. And before he turned 40, he was like in his late 30s. Brittany was in her late 20s. They're in different places mentally. I think Brittany still has a lot of maturing and growing up to do. But I did notice that in this season, it appeared that she tried to find closure around the things that bothered her. They spent a lot of time letting Brittany discuss her past and the things that happened to her. You know, we learned at the end of the season of Love After Lockup that she had two other kids. I don't remember that being mentioned when she was initially shown on the show. So as the story develops, you learn that she became a mother when she was a teen. She was homeless when she was 12. And she came across her child's father who was in his like late 20s, almost 30 years old. So that's how her two daughters or her daughter and her son ended up in the adoption system. And so we got to kind of see where that hurt came from. Her mother and her sisters moved down and they were in an apartment, you know, five, six minutes away from where their home was. And you kind of got to see Brittany seek that closure with her mom and express how those things affected her. She was very emotional during the season and trying to find that closure and build towards a better life for her her husband and her kids another thing is she tried to find her kids but she was denied in the process i could tell that that really hurt her but i admired that she tried to look for the children and who knows in the future that could open back up unfortunately those things when they happen on paper people look at that versus the actual person and their confession so I'm sure the interest was in the best of the kids, but it's unfortunate that now, you know, she may not have access to them. I would say that Marcelino was extremely supportive throughout the season. Brittany, like I said, her maturity level in some ways is not there. He's worried about trying to pay all the bills, provide for her. She's in school right now. They have a new baby on the way. They just had a little girl. And then her um, oldest son that is involved in life is there as well Giovanni so it's stressful for him to provide and he's trying the best that he can because Brittany did bring home a puppy and I think that kind of stressed him out before he went out and lied about his whereabouts 
I think the biggest takeaway from that was that they both need to work on their communication. Brittany shouldn't have went out and bought a puppy without talking to him first. And he should have been more transparent about their finances. WeTV did a great job dramatizing that situation because it looked like Marcelino was going to cheat. And I was like, no, I don't want Marcelino to cheat. He's such a great guy. So I was happy to find out that he did not cheat, but he was just meeting with the woman to kind of understand how to pr improve his poker playing so he could provide for his family. Brittany overreacted and the way she acted, I could understand but I could also understand why Marcelina was like, hey, you can't just wake up and hit me and throw drinks on me. That's unacceptable. But like her reaction was the reaction of a woman that has been lied to or cheated on. And that's probably what she assumed. And that's what it looked like. Honestly, if you told me you're going to be with your cousin and then your cousin calls me looking for you, like that makes you look like you're doing something you ain't got no business doing. So I can understand it from both sides. But I was happy to see that they ended off strong. They're having a baby boy. And according to them, their family is complete. Marcelino's not trying to have any more kids. And I don't think he wants any more puppies or any animals added either.